Yeah, welcome everybody. Um, I would like to welcome Matilde as the facilitator of this room. Um, Matilde is a recent graduate from EHL and also a last year finalist, and she will guide you through the session here at the um, Component Hospitality of Tomorrow. And I may hand over the word now to Matilde and wish everyone uh, the best of luck and have fun. <laughs> I got there, got there eventually. <coughs> oh. right. Hi, wait, Matilda, you're on mute. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> well, I'm trying to get everyone on uh, the panel, but not everyone is connected yet. Ah, we have Peter here. Hi, everyone. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, beautiful, brilliant. So uh, welcome everyone. Thank you so much, Alexandra, for the introduction. Um, so I will be hosting this session today and I'm sending a very big thought to my teammate Far Redding, uh, with whom, uh, who will actually be part of the jury today and uh, with whom we participated successfully last year in the Genio Challenge. Um, so now let's welcome uh, the students and tutors of, uh, first of all, Université de Sergi Pontoise, Paris Seine. Uh, we also have students and tutors from EHL, um, EUTH Saint Paul Barcelona, Florida International Hospitality, uh, uh, Florida International University, sorry, um, Griffith University, and Taylor's University. So in the jury, I would like to also welcome Hans uh, Mayer, um, Carol van Ekelen. Michael Well, Peter Cole, and Far Redding. Uh, so do I have everyone from the jury in the... Yes, we do. Beautiful. Um, so for the setup, um, I think everybody is a little bit of, uh, aware of what's happening, but I'm going to repeat it again. So the students um, have prepared a maximum of four minute speech um, and uh, followed by a maximum two minute Q&A uh, session, um, thus six minutes in total for every group. Um, so if you see my hand up, it means uh, that you have reached the four minutes during your presentation or the two minutes uh, for your Q&A session. And if your presentation is um, less than four minutes, you will have more time for the Q&A session, obviously. Every group has maximum six minutes. Um, so we're very strict on time management, obviously, because, I mean, it's a very big event and needs a lot of uh, management. So um, we're going to ask every group to try and respect that time limit. So every go, everything can go smoothly. Um, that being said, let's not waste any time and start with the first group. So please, everyone, welcome me from Australia, uh, Caitlin, Christine, and Isabella representing Griffith University. Um, so I'm going to have them enter the moderation panel. Um, if you could um, maybe uh, Caitlin, Christine, and Isabella request to have access. Uh, I think you were showed how to do. Okay, I have, okay. Um, good evening. And, good evening, and I have Isabella right there. Oh, Beautiful. Hi. Daytime over there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, okay, beautiful. Let me know if everything works out for you, if you manage to share your screen, and let me know exactly when you're about to start. Can I just check if my screen is visible? Yep. Yeah, it works for yep. me. Yes. Beautiful. All right, then we're ready to start when you are. Okay. Please go ahead. Yep. Yeah. The future of sustainable hospitality is 3D. For too long, the single use mentality has dominated the industry with consumers expecting their every need to be delivered instantaneously. 
Over 95% of toiletries and amenities placed within hotel rooms are wasted, and these rooms additionally contribute over 178 kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalents per night. These unsustainable activities are exacerbating environmental degradation, diminishing available resources for future generations, and wasting unnecessary expenses for enterprise. The industry is desperately in need of a shift to redefine the values of hospitality to protect rather than exploit the local environment and society. This can be achieved by reducing the single use mentality, emphasizing sustainable operations and promoting the transparency of supply chains. To reduce the detrimental single use mentality without eliminating the luxurious element of complimentary in-room gifts, 3D hospitality responds to demand in a novel and renewable way. The 3D Hospitality Initiative will see hotels adopting solar-powered 3D printers in their operations for the on-site production of in-room amenities, operational supplies and other ad hoc goods required by guests. Portable desktop printers will be placed into guest rooms with certain free quotas available for the usually provided for amenities with the additional option to purchase extra prints for a small fee. These would include the likes of shampoo, conditioner, combs, toothbrushes, etc. Larger industrial printers throughout other operational departments will also be able to respond to guests' more specific and larger needs, such as running shoes or a yoga mat. These can also be utilised for events and functions where additional furniture may be required. The aim of the initiative is to have all materials produced by the printers be completely recyclable and where guests can place their used goods and amenities into decomposers nearby the printers to be sanitized, recycled and reused again as filament, essentially eliminating the single use mentality. This proposal has multi-level benefits. From a micro perspective, a hotel's organizational values, vision and processes will be transformed to create an experience that encompasses sustainability at its core value. Now at a MISO level, the transactional nature of traditional supply chains will be redefined by in-house manufacturing. And at a macro level, the value chain of hotels will be transformed to align with environmental priorities. The cost of 3D printing has exponentially decreased since the initiation in the 80s, with the expected cost of a portable printer in 2050 to be only between 20 to 200 US dollars in today's value. Together as a team, Isabella, Christine and I, along with our mentors and industry partners at Binabara Lodge and the Advanced Design and Prototyping Institute of Griffith University, bring to you a chance to redefine hospitality's values to ensure a sustainable future for our industry. 3D hospitality will simplify the hotel supply chains and eradicate the single use mentality to ensure the future of hospitality is sustainable. Thank you for your time. Perfect girls. Um, you can now move on to the Q&A. Great. Um, you didn't mention anything about the solar powering of the 3Ds, is, is that a change? Oh uh, yes, uh, actually in our investor deck, uh, we have already put that part in detail. We assume like in by 2050, solar power energy will be popular uh, like uh, in our daily life and can be um, used by lots of business, especially lots of governments nowadays have already provide lots of support to business to install solar power energy and also the quarter yard uh, Lancaster Hotel has already achieved 100% solar power, uh, solar powered. So it's very achievable by 2050. Okay, thank you. Uh, did you Remind me. Uh, Go ahead, Hans. Did, sorry. Did you think about uh, because it's not only the product but also what's in the product that's often wasted? Did you think about that? How we can tackle that? Because I really love the uh, idea. It's incredibly forward thinking. But it's often not only the case that uh, an, uh, the, the shampoo bo uh, bottle is getting wasted, but also its, it's contents. Yeah, so um, with advances in 3D, so even currently organs can be 3D printed. So every element of these products will be printed, including the contents, such as the shampoo and conditioner. And so by providing them a certain quota for the day, it can just be like a single use per time and you can try and eliminate um, the wastage of that single use item as it can all be then recycled and reused as filament for the next process and for the next project that you need. Great. Sorry. 
Um, so you said that you can keep recycling this material that you're going to keep reprinting. What is the lifespan of such an item? Because I'm sure at some point or another, it will become, uh, it won't create the same, um, how you say, quality product anymore. Does that, does that make sense? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, this is definitely something we would need to investigate further through prototyping and testing, etc. We did partner with the Griffith Advanced Design Prototyping Institute, which is an, a 3D printing company within our university. And um, they said there is the potential for this recyclable and this type of filament. But again, it does need to be tested. And obviously, at some point, you will need to implement some more raw materials into said filament, but it will dramatically reduce the supply chains required prior to this. I, I guess that I guess there's going to be wastage. I mean, there I said, so you print it once, but presumably there's wastage when you print these things up, right? I mean, I'm not actually sure how it works, but, but you know, that in itself is single use and therefore presumably it's not sustainable, right? Um, there will be... Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, so oh. oh. Yeah. My bad. Uh, there was a little problem with my connection, but I am back and uh, I'm sorry. We're going to have to finish up with this question quickly. You have 30 seconds left. Okay, um, so we are promoting an initiative um, in the recycling. So while we can't force people to recycle the bottoms themselves, that we will be encouraged through some sort of monetary um, give back incentive, as well as the whole sustainable element to it to incentivize people. Sorry, I hope that quick answer. <laughs> well, 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 well. From the actual printers um, can then go into the recycle refillment as it is anyway. Great right. stuff. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much, uh, Caitlin, Christine, and Isabella. So next, uh, we're going to ask well, well. Angeline, Kevin, and uh, Namik from Taylor's University in Malaysia to join us. Sorry, really quickly, Mathilde, do we have time to quickly fill in the, the grading rubric or do we do that all at the end? Uh, probably all at the end. I need okay. to leave the floor to yeah, no the next team. Uh, Hi. Hi. So, okay, Kevin is here and I'm just missing Angeline. Um, Hello, guys. Uh, do you know if Angeline has managed to request the floor? Uh, she said she did. Let me just double check again. Because uh, I cannot find her in the moderation panel. Uh, she says she applied uh, applied like to ask for permission. Um, does she go by another name maybe? Andreas, no. Or um, maybe she can request again if she manages. Okay. Okay, I saw her. Oh, she just unrequested. Can she Ah, okay, beautiful, brilliant. Hi, I'm, I'm Great. sorry. <laughs> no worries, no problem. Okay, uh, just let me know when you're ready to start. The floor is yours. Yeah, we're ready. <clears throat> Do you know how much food is being wasted in the hospitality industry? In the UK alone, 79,000 tons of food waste are produced every year. Um, I'm sorry, guys. I We do not see your screen. I don't know if you shared your presentation. Oh, I don't know why it's not showing. Um, um, can we do it without it if it's taking time? Um, yeah, I guess that's fine. Go ahead. Three. Do you know how much food is being wasted in the hospitality industry? In the UK alone, 79,000 tons of food waste are produced every year. Now you can imagine the global figure. We discovered that one of the main reasons for such a high number of food waste in the industry is a low importance placed on the problem within businesses. This is because of the high 
costs associated with the current plans and methods ready available in the market. <clears throat> However, as it has shown us time and time again, global climate change waits for no one. When the wasted food begins to rot in landfills, it produces methane, a greenhouse gas that traps heat 28 times more effectively than the already dangerous carbon dioxide. It is one of the causes of rising temperatures and global climate change. As an industry, we are part of the problem. If we are to survive on this planet as a species and create a sustainable future, it is now time for us to make the necessary changes and reverse the effects caused by our own ignorance. To do this, we have created Ecofield, a company which works with hospitality businesses like hotels and restaurants by collecting their food waste for small fee and then processing it in our very own factory. One process, we distribute the product to customers like farmers and eco-friendly businesses who put it in, into good use in their product or processes. This then empties up a lot of space in the landfills, thus reducing the carbon footprint of the industry. To begin, uh, we have decided to focus our efforts in our home country, Malaysia. This is simply because it is easier to start a company in a place where you are already have some form of connections. We have also started to find hospitality businesses who are interested in partnering with us and customers who are interested in purchasing the products. Every company needs a revenue stream in order to stay alive. As mentioned before, we will be selling the broken down food waste to com companies and individuals who are interested in using them and also charging hospitality businesses a small fee to collect their food waste. That makes you, by partnering with our company, businesses will definitely be able to reduce the negative impact their food waste has on the planet without the high cost of doing it themselves. Not only does this allow them to focus on their more profitable aspects of running their business, but it also brings together the hospitality community to solve a pressing issue with the current state of the world. Increasing sustainability within our industry is essential if we want to leave this planet safe for our future generations. Food waste may seem like an inconsequential issue at first glance. However, as each day passes by, the problems it creates grows at a rate too fast for comfort. Although things may seem grim, a sustainable 2050 is still doable if we get to work now. If you want to do your part to help save the planet that we call, we always call home then we have to start now start with us with ecoville thank you beautiful guys perfectly on time uh, you can now move on to a two minute q a um i just have a question um in your investors deck you you mentioned that one of your competitors um, are currently offering businesses to collect food waste However, you are suggesting that one of your main revenue streams will be that you charge a fee for uh, to hotels to collect their waste when it's already a cost to them in a general sense. Um, so why would they choose to pay for you to collect waste when there are other competitors that are paying them to collect waste? Um, if I think it was a mistake on the part where it's actually they are being paid as well. I mean, they are being charged as well, not they are being paid. Can you can you explain your financials? Uh, six and a half million uh, ringgits plus plus and an investment of six. How how does that work? Oh uh, yeah. So actually, for the financial breakdown, um, so um, we need approximately like nine million ringgit Malaysia for the land and construction, and one million ringgit for the you know the shop lots rental, you know the monthly rental, and also the salaries of the staffs that we need. Yeah. Okay, so you're you're asking for an investment of six million. So how did, I'm not sure how that reconciles. You need nine. You ask for six. Uh, no, she meant six, not nine. I think it was a slip okay. of the tongue. Okay. The num those are not the numbers in the in the plan, but I mean you might want to look at it. No, I think she it was a slip of the tongue. She meant six, not nine. Oh yeah. 
Right, but I'm adding up the numbers: six and a half for the site, a million, uh, a million for uh, construction and shop lots, and eleven, eleven thousand. If I add those up, it got, came to about seven and a half, uh, seven point five million. And you're asking for six. So, how, where, where? My point is, where, where's the rest coming from? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, sorry, I need to interrupt you again. Um, thank you very much uh, for the presentation. I will now uh, welcome to the floor um, uh, from the beautiful and sunny Barcelona, EUHT St. Paul, Claudia, Victor, and Guillermo. Uh, Matilda, Matilda uh, yes. we, need, we need to see the presentations because we're scoring the presentation. So give them I a know. see it, that's a bit tricky. Of course, of course. Uh, I they, I asked them, and they told me from um, from uh, Taylor's University that they couldn't uh, okay. put it up. Okay. So I that rather need to stay on, that yeah. disadvantages them. That's the only problem. <laughs> of course, I understand. I just need to follow a very strict timing. <laughs> Got you. Okay. Good afternoon. Beautiful. Good afternoon. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, so the floor is yours. You can start anytime. Please uh, share your presentation with the audience. Sure, let me know if you can see it properly. Beautiful. We can see properly your presentation. The floor is yours anytime. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, well, have you ever felt the unforgettable experience of admiring a unique masterpiece and feeling that this moment was priceless? Uh, tourism gives us the opportunity to discover the secret beauty spots that became part of our lifetime memories. However, its evolution has also made us forget about this idea. But the unexpected uh, arrival of the COVID pandemic slapped us in the face and reminded us the true sense of tourism. Neither the undeveloped origins of our sector nor the overcrowding we had reached were healthy for the planet and our industry. The key to recover this experience and maintain the benefits for those who truly love tourism is control these assets and to find the balance between these images. To accomplish this paradigm shift, our generation must take a step forward. Our proposal is to achieve this goal is COVIDA, which is the combination of the new norm and the need to recover life, beta in Latin, through our industry. That is our solution, a replicable pattern that fits internationally. Guillermo, can you give us more details, please? Of course, Victor. So we propose a methodology for studying destinations under environmental and social indicators that when are introduced in our software tool will enable the public entities, which is our target, to sustainably manage and harness the potential of the destinations within a technical support program that we supply. And we firmly believe in a fundamental structural change rather than using patches. So the public entities should be the instrument with which our industry and the generation cooperate shoulder to shoulder. Now, what COVID consists of are these four stages. Uh, firstly, we have established our commandments, which are the environmental and social indicators that we mentioned. Secondly, an audit, which is a study case that follows the COVID steps. These two previous stages generate results, which are introduced into the software tool that we set. And lastly, we create proposals according to the first and the second stages. We do implementation plans and a shadowing technical support. So we are about to reveal the secret sauce, which is data, but uh, we won't be revealing the elaboration yet. And now, Claudia, can you say uh, why we are special? Sure. Our added value is based on the monthly shadowing technical support that supplies our customers with action plans and feedback, the data, our secret sauce, that which we previously mentioned, and the shared value we create for all destination stakeholders that include the benefit that local inhabitants normally do not perceive. To pass this project from paper into reality, we need a total investment of 175,000 euros to cover the following expenses. The headquarters office, develop the software tool, the first stage of the commercial and marketing plan, and hire the IT and customer service team. So, how do we earn money? Firstly, with the selling price of our software tool, plus the audit, and this price would depend on the location's characteristics. 
And secondly, with the monthly fee that would be the shadow in technical support. Needless to say, we would like to add that we generate a double side profit. For each customer we incorporate into our client portfolio, we would be getting extra monthly fees and at the same time sowing the seeds to lead the future of our industry. All this is what Covita aims to do. We do appreciate your attention and please do not hesitate to let us know if you have any kind of questions. Brilliant, perfectly on time, guys. Uh, so you now have two minutes for the Q&A. Please go ahead. So a question, if, if I could. Um, so how do you enforce the uh, the data that's used? How is it that you make sure that people are providing you with the, the same information to be used across the platform? Do you want to answer that, Guillermo? Uh, yes, of course. Well, it's part of the secret sauce, so we don't want to reveal that. Uh, much, but we think that it's important to go to every destination, uh, share this time and understanding the, the identity of the of the place, and use this as a database both for the public entities and all the stakeholders. So we can use this creativity and human teamwork that also Mr. Taylor said at the beginning, and we think that using all together uh, we can we can do that work. When you say public entities, can you just describe what you mean? Yeah, sure. I can take this one if you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we refer to the entities that uh, have the potential to manage the tourism of a destination. So we didn't want to concrete more because we know that the system is a bit different in Spanish than in other countries. We have different entities here in Spanish, depending on if we are talking about a village or a town, or if we are talking about a whole region but we were talking about those who manage the tourism in each destination tourism management marketing people yeah okay could you could you give me an example of um what exactly you're auditing just a very concrete example about the added value mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, sure. The added value is, uh, well, it's, it's like the shared value first, that the whole population feel the, the, these benefits, not only the, the business or not only the entity, as well as uh, the local inhabitants. And of course, the, the, the support, the shadowing support and the data for the same public entity. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Claudia, Victor, and Guillermo. Um, now I will ask to the floor uh, the Université de Sergi Pontoise Paris Seine with Ines, T, and Yahya. Hello, everyone. Hello. Oh, hi. <laughs> uh, yeah, I might need one of you to mute exactly. Um, also, maybe one of you has to turn off the sound of their computer if you want to talk together in the same room so it doesn't it's double the, the sound. Okay, beautiful. It works perfectly. Uh, just let me know when you want to start. The floor is yours anytime. So we're ready. Beautiful. Go ahead. Can you hear, hear us uh, well? Yeah. Perfect. Imagine yourself in Venice on a pagoda. Uh, voguing in a small canal with your significant other. Is this what you had in mind? Well, reality may hurt you. Last spring, we planned a Christmas and party. We had dreamed about it for a month. And instead of this, we landed on this. Yes, we were too naive. In 2018, 1.4 billion tourists traveled around the globe. By 2050, there would be 4 billion travelers. We wanted to figure out a way to manage the flow of travelers. We've all seen the fallout of mass tourism, and our wish is to prevent them from happening. We want to preserve the planet, its biodiversity, as well as humanity's cultural heritage. Nice to meet you. We are Ines, Yaya, and Anne, founders of Tomorrow's online travel agency, Too Good To Miss. 
We want to promote places that are yet to be discovered and make sustainability a deeply rooted concept. Work as one with the local population, the local authorities, and tourism actors as, so as to be uh, beneficial to all. We want to raise awareness, reach to users, and improve the industry's incomes during the low seasons. Today, 70% of travelers would be more likely to book their accommodation if they knew it was a problem. And that is what we are offering. When creating your ultimate account, you will have- Sorry guys, I'm just gonna interrupt you. We lost the sharing of your screen. Yes, ah, okay, I'm so sorry. So when creating your ticket to miss account, you will have to select your preference based on what you like to do, when and the place you like to visit. And if the destination you are looking for is current mass tourism, the platform will suggest you to change the date or to another destination with the same features. And the alternative will be uh, in the same price range with eco-friendly accommodation, transportation and activities. So the more you use the platform, the more accurate it becomes. Thanks to collected data, we will be able to forecast and redirect travel flows. We will first target millennials and Generation Z. And our main competitors are big online travel agencies, such as Booking.com or Expedia, but also the travel guidance platform TripAdvisor. By 2050, we expect it to reach 70% of travelers using Too Good To Miss. Travelers travel more responsibly and the travel flow to be well homogenized. Too Good To Miss believes the world is not a resource to be exploited, but a magic place that has to be protected and celebrated for its uniqueness. Wouldn't you agree? Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you. Brilliant, guys. Well done. Uh, so you have one minute additional for your Q&A. So you now have three minutes in total for your Q&A session. Please start anytime you feel like it. So what, ha what happens when I want to go to a destination because I want to go to the destination? So we will advertise you, we will tell you that this destination right now is overcrowded. We will tell you, all right, you definitely want to go there and we understand it. But we are telling you that it's currently overcrowded. So we are showing you other destination or if you don't want the other destination, we are proposing other dates that may be uh, better dates for your destination with less people, less crowded. Great, good. If you want, we can show you the the website, so uh, we will have all the features that the um, client is looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, Great. Others might have questions while you're doing it. Okay. As you can see in the photo is our website. In the left hand, the customer can select the data with the destination they are looking for. And in the left hand, uh, the website will show that, oh, this destination is overcrowded. And in the right hand, they will show the alternative destination or the purpose another travel date. So users will see all the benefits with the money they can save and also the responsibly, responsibility for the planet when they travel more green. Very good. How do you want to penetrate the market of OTAs? All right. So uh, currently, the situation with COVID-19 has a little bit stopped the uh, tourism activity. So I think, uh, we think, sorry, that everything is going to be good in a few months, a few years, when the situation get better, gets better. So the, new, the, the market is going to be open for new arrivals, we think. And we also want to build, uh, build a community through social media. Uh, for now, the big social medias for uh, our targets are Instagram, TikTok, uh, sometimes Twitter, it depends, but we want to reach out to them uh, through, those through, the, through those platforms before the, the before Too Good to Miss, to miss launches. So as we said, we're targeting millennials and Generation Z, and as my colleague said also, 70% of travelers nowadays are wishing to travel more eco-friendly. So I think that it's a target for new travel agencies. Hello. Thank you. Hi. We have time for one last quick question if you need. Uh, Farah, were you raising your hand? No? 
the one I can add additional information for our main strength. Because uh, our website, before long, our website we will have one year to build up the community. So uh, this we will attract all the users, the millennials and generation Z, for our website before launch. So they will be very integrated with our website even before it's happy launch. So that's why we can uh, attract more users. And secondly, uh, we will um, uh, contact. We have the sales team of ten percent to develop the destination. So we will go to the Iceland with uh, the so it's already in our financial forecast, if you want to see more. Thank you very much, uh, Ines, T, and Yahya. It was um, a really great presentation. So now I will welcome to the floor uh, the team from Ecole Hôtelière de Lausanne, uh, represented this year by Yves, Lucas, and Stefano. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Okay, I think we have everyone here. Um, let me know when you, okay, beautiful. We have your screen. Okay, super. Um, we are ready when you are. All right, Thank you. let's go. Well, first I'd like to welcome you to Sefco, our new hospitality business model of shared, value, shared economic value to co-living cooperative opportunities. But let's take you on a vision for the year 2050. So hospitality is one of the most diversely skilled industries in the world. At our heart, we create experiences, we build communities, we sow development opportunities for people, and we design spaces that make them feel at home. What we want to present to you now is a vision for the year 2050, but it is built on our current foundation, skills, and mindset. In today's world, we measure happiness through material wealth which results in overproduction, material waste, and high amounts of CO2 emissions. But on the other hand, you're increasingly feeling more lonely and isolated, and humanity should not continue to live like this anymore. Us, as an experienced that industry, should build on our existing capabilities to create community-focused calling facilities that create value through shared experiences and social connections. To leveraging economies of scale, as well as the sharing of space and resources, we have the potential to make sustainable living affordable for everyone. And to make this a reality, we present you, Sefco, the creators of communities, a business model that can be adopted by any hospitality company and that will ensure long-lasting business success and a sense of optimism for a brighter and more sustainable future. But before we reach 2050, let us take you through our three horizons. Our first horizon aims to introduce Sefco to developed countries. Why? With the housing crisis, urban loneliness, and the isolation epidemic reaching new heights, there's never been a better time to aggressively expand into the community living sector. Imagine a neighborhood managed by you, a hotelier. With your experience in rooms, food and beverage, and wellness, you can create profit while allevi alleviating many of the problems we see in, so in urban development. Um, with shared living spaces, tailored dietary meals, and economically designed rooms, we can leverage the efficiencies gained to create shared value for people, businesses, and the planet. We're taking what you're best at and bringing it to co-living. Alongside the growth of tomorrow's mega cities in today's developing countries, slums, as you can see, are becoming home to an ever-increasing amount of people. So they hinder economic growth, but what is also is that they are an overlooked and uncaptured market of over $5 trillion in purchasing power. So here's your strategic blue ocean. Implementing co-living ecosystems in developing countries, also backed by financial security through private and public partnerships. What we mean is low debt risk, is a restriction on mixed housing solution, and stable returns based on uh, low price but high quantity volumes distributed individually. We want hospitality to facilitate the sustainable development of these regions, and also guaranteeing the integration of slums of hope into cities to be later referred to as a neighborhood. So our Horizon 3 represents our utopia for 2050, a time where planet and people live together in a symbiotic relationship. Alongside technology and strategic partnerships, we want CEFCO to create circularity and operate regenerative ecosystems and neighborhoods through shared value. We envision our communities to be self-sufficient, whereby residences are hospitality's co-creators, paving their own futures and encountering new opportunities. 
We want hospitality to be at the center of it all, cementing this industry as a leader in the sustainable development of societies. Altogether, energy that's devoted to creating new functioning models is likely to be much more efficient than energy used to fix our current modus operandi. So we believe it's only by building uh, innovative business models with circularity at the core that sustainability and profit will be achieved in the long term. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, EHL. You are perfectly on time. Um, you can now start with your two minutes Q&A session. Question I would like to ask, uh, team. Uh, what is the difference between co-living currently in the market and your Horizon 1? So Horizon 1 just aims at getting more of the hospitality players to get into the co-living market in order to also drive that more people living in such a sustainable way. And we also think that further to 230, we can in increase the existing business model by giving tailored meals and giving even more services to the, to the uh, con um, consumers and customers. Yeah, but what, what, what I try to understand is, what is for example, the collective, which is an, uh, a well-known co-living operator, what's the difference between what they envision now and uh, uh, what you envision in Hor Horizon 1? I think it is very similar we envision Horizon 1 because we really want to build into Horizon 2 and 3 to really have a social impact because there is already many existing companies who are going to this direction. So I wouldn't say that we have even more than that, but I think it's really in the Horizon 2 and 3 where we will build on this existing infrastructure and also for the hospitality players now to have already a foot into the door to help with developing slums and furthermore developing the whole community. Okay, thank you. Do, do you okay. envision this as a, a full, solely a private investment opportunity or is there a public investment needed as well? So the idea is like depending on the scale. So we, we uh, have done quite a few researches and it's also very big problems for cities and governments to develop uh, working urban like neighborhoods. Uh, so we can envision in a future where there would be uh, either like tax reduction or like ease restriction, uh, restrictions on building those ecosystems that can be so both NGOs or governments, but also private investments. Okay, we're perfectly on time uh, for the end of this Q&A. Uh, thank you very much, you. Eve, Lucas and Stefano. Uh, really thank good you job. Guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, see you. Uh, so last but not least, we will welcome from Florida International University, Erika, Summer and Jennifer. So um, if you could request your access. Okay, beautiful, brilliant. Uh, so I have Summer in the waiting room and Erika, beautiful. Okay. Um, I just lost, okay, Summer is here, perfect. Um, so if you could share your presentation with us. There is a very loud background noise. Um, I think it comes from Erica. Oh, I'm sorry, let's see. Okay, um, if you want to share your presentation, you can go ahead. Uh, just let me know when you want to start. Okay, one, hold on one moment, just bring it up. I'm sorry, I'm not sure why the actual... Don't no worry, don't no worry. You still have a few minutes. You still have a few minutes. Okay, I have another request from Erica. I don't know. Oh, okay, we lost Erica on the way. 
Um, okay. Okay, we can see you now. Okay, this is not, I'm not sure why my... Maybe uh, Jennifer or Summer, if you also can try to share. I have it, I have the page open, but the actual, it's not, the actual application is not allowing me to choose this. Um, Are you on uh, Safari or Chrome? I'm on Chrome. Okay, um, then maybe Jennifer or Summer, if you manage to share the page from your side. We have one minute left for... Why it's not allowing me to open it. Can't you send it send it to uh, Summer or Jennifer? Let me see. It's very really strange. I'm not sure why this is happening. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to ask you to start. Um, I'm sorry about this. Do you think you can manage without the okay the support? Okay, brilliant, beautiful. Uh, I'm so sorry about that. I don't know why I wasn't. Don't worry, don't worry. Okay, okay, I'll let you go ahead. Good luck. We predict that the future of the hospitality industry is sustainable practices that will benefit and include the surrounding communities. The driving force will be the plan that we created, the Sustainable Hospitality Accord, a commitment to sustainable practices and community on a global scale. The Sustainable Hospitality Accord is to sustainability what David Beckham is to soccer, a game changer. Our vision and value proposition focus on, focuses on these UN sustainable development goals. The problems we face are that plastics will litter the globe as no mandates are in place to keep up with the rapid rise in tourism. Sustainable consumption is often overlooked in favor of millions of dollars of tax revenue from events, and the sustainable hospitality workforce is shrinking. To fund the accord, a sustainability surcharge will be added to every hotel room night and event ticket sold, paid for directly by the consumer. Thus, we bring you our solution. Venue-based plastic recycling machines, smart cans, and a community and industry-based education program. Our three-part approach consists of a sustainability surcharge, sustainable consumption initiative, and our commitment to community. The surcharge will fund the purchase of vegetable-based plastic and the education program. Venue-based recycling machines will turn plastics into items needed for the event. A smart cans app will encourage recycling and put cash and incentives into the hands of both tourists and community members. Our marketing and sales strategy is a four-part approach. We will build awareness through commercial advertising, um, an app, an interactive app will connect smart cans to the community, our relentless commitment efforts will cause a ripple effect throughout the community, and crowd control will inspire additional donations and allow for fund matching. Our team is passionate about sustainability, the community, and hospitality. We have the resources necessary to bring this plan into action. In 2019, Miami would have generated $360,000 in revenue from only four events. This would have been enough revenue to put 14 people through our education program. In that same year, $15.6 million could have, been could have been generated for the sustainability fund. Imagine how much revenue could be generated on a global scale. The sustainable surcharge will aid in the 
implementation of the vegetable-based recycling classics program. Strategic partnerships will provide venue-based recycling machines and smart cans throughout the community. Funds collected via the surcharge will help to establish the education programs at partner hotels and drive decent work and economic growth. In the Miami test market, every $25,000 generated pays for the education of one individual. Addressing single-use plastic waste and recycling will work towards no waste communities and reducing carbon emissions, both of which will work to reduce climate change. Now picture a future without the Accord. Thank you. Thank you, girls. Um, okay, you have now two minutes to go ahead with your Q&A session. I will let you start now. Did I understand you right that you tested it in uh, in Miami? What, it was a no. real uh, it was a real test. No, this is just like um, the test market, like our sample market that we've conducted all of our research in. So we've gathered the numbers from the Miami market, but we didn't actually implement the plan in Miami, but it's just the numbers that are in Miami. Did you check with the people who need to pay for this, whether they would be prepared to pay for this? Yes, we conducted a survey and we found out on average about eight out of 10 people were okay with this surge. Some of them were a little hesitant, but they said that $1 was okay if it was just $1 per ticket as opposed to um, doubling the price of certain events or hotel room prices. Okay, thank you. Um, but how does the hotel benefit from adding this surcharge if they could, let's say, 8 out of 10 people? I mean, that means they would technically could lose two guests out of those 10, which also multiplied means that they could lose quite a number of customers do they benefit from the surcharge at all i i think that now it's time for people that are are visiting locales that they need to start taking a little responsibility in the um, footprint that they're leaving and i think that the if you're if you're going to play you're going to pay needs to start happening in the hospitality industry interesting in the u.s in particular there's an awful lot of surcharges that are put on the base room rates of hotels so actually you know you're really multiplying up quite aggressively so uh, i agree with you uh, pay to play is fair um the question is is you know if you add on the, the surcharges you're up to 25 percent on top it's a pretty big number um i'm sorry i'm just oh we agree <laughs> <laughs> I think Matilda's just gone off on. on She's frozen. She came to a standstill. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. Well done. Right. I think we've lost the so I'm not sure what happened there. Um, anyway, we, we've come to the end of the pitches, so that's a, a good time for Matilda to drop off. Um, I think we're going to have a, a wrap up by Peter. Sally. So just brief, very briefly, th uh, from all on behalf of all the judges, uh, we want to say thank you to all the students for all the hard work uh, and for your bravery in getting in front of us and pitching. Uh, which were all very well done. I know it took a lot of passion and a lot of time and effort. Um, and thank you very much for putting all that hard work in to try to push us all forward as we think about the future of hospitality here. Well done. Thanks very much, everyone. Um, so if you want to make your way back to, there's actually still um, some pictures going on in the uh, breakout room one. So if you click on pictures and CEO forum, you can make your way over to that one. I think there should be one left. Um, failing that, if you go over to the main stage, then we've got some entertainment for you starting at uh, 13.55. So we'll see you over there soon. Thank you. And, and Thank you so much. Oh. When are we re re required back, Sally? Uh, Michael, you need to be in the CEO forum at uh, five past. Five past two.
Okay, great. Okay. Thanks. Thanks.